confidential prayer, email or text your request to prayer at solofieldchapel.org or by text at 876-877-9794. Visiting with us for the first time? Welcome! We invite you to complete the contact card in the link below to connect with us. God bless you. Thank you for giving cheerfully. Here are a few convenient ways to do so. One, you may deposit your tithes and offerings in the drop box at the church office at number 7, Mondays to Fridays from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Tithes and offerings can also be done by a direct online deposit to our Swallowfield Chapel BNS New Kingston current account, number 804161, branch number 50575, or click Give on our website, swallowfieldchapel.org. Donations for food care packages should be so indicated. Join us at 5 p.m. at number 9 as our youth choir celebrates 20 years of ministry with every praise, an evening of worship and thanksgiving to God. Invite family and friends and let's celebrate these milestones together. Also, you need a ticket to enter the concert. You can get your free tickets for the concert in the foyer after the service. We'll resume two in-person services on Sunday, October 27 at 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. The Jamaica Fire Brigade will be celebrating Fire and Life Safety Awareness Week with a national church service right here at number 9 during our second service at 10.30 a.m. This is a communion Sunday. However, communion will only be done in the first service at 8 a.m. After the second service, the Jamaica Fire Brigade will conduct a march pass on Swallowfield Road. There will be no ACE class today and classes will resume on Sunday, October 27. There will be no meetup this Monday as we celebrate National Heroes Day. Meetup resumes on Monday, October 28. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Tickets for the Emerge Dance Workshop will be available in the foyer after the service. For the links to these and other activities, visit swallowfieldchapel.churchcenter.com. May God bless you all as we worship together.
So hello fam, today we celebrate 54 incredible years of God's faithfulness to us here at Swallowfield Chapel. Boy, we are thankful for his guidance and his provision through the decades and for the many lives that have been touched and transformed by his love. Maybe you can even testify. Our speaker for today is our very own Pastor David, Uncle D, and he's going to be talking to us on the topic, good to be or not to be. Our mission here at Swallowfield is to be and to make disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we do this by, you know it, connecting, growing, and serving. This simply means that we help people to connect to God and to the Christian community of faith, the church. We help people to grow as faithful followers of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we empower people to serve wherever God has placed you in the world. So. Whether you've been here from the beginning, which means you're a very well-seasoned swallow or, you know, up in age with a few greys, or you're joining us for the first time, or maybe you're somewhere in between, don't matter. We're very thrilled to have you here sharing this joyous occasion with us. And if you haven't already done so, I'm going to ask you, share the link with your friends and your family and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can be connected to everything swallow. Welcome to our 54th anniversary service. Let's worship together. Let's reflect on God's goodness as we look forward to the future with hearts full of gratitude and hope. Pre-1970, Helen Clark, a Jamaican missionary to China, fled China during its revolution and returned to Jamaica. Upon her return, she married an Anglican minister, Reverend Herbert Gallimore. Helen, with the support of her husband, started a mission to the growing Chinese immigrant population in Jamaica, which included Sunday school for the children and a worship service for the adults. Services were translated from English into Mandarin and later Hakka. The year was 1937. Uncles Eli, Cecil and Dave were among those who attended the early meetings and they each went on to become active members and played leadership roles in several local brethren assemblies. They, however, continued to attend, lead, and serve the Chinese mission. As part of the mission, they would, on a regular basis, travel across Jamaica to preach the gospel. Uncle Eli would preach and there was a quartet which included Uncle Cecil and they would sing some songs. We went a lot to Clarendon, mm -hmm. Brother White, from the Associated Gospel Assembly. Right. We went to, and also the brethren, Lionel Town, Longwood, um, Hayes, uh, Salt, Salt, Salt River, uh, Portland Cottage, Rocky Point, wow. and all those. Um, Christiana, um, mm -hmm. Eli, I didn't go into there, but he went as far as Montego Bay one, one time in a, in a bus, with a bus, you know. <laughs> mm. You normally go on a Sunday? Yes. So tell me what a typical Sunday would look like, Uncle Eli. I mean, because I, mean, I know you were still in the church, so oh, what, what a typical Sunday would look like? Morning, you attend the breaking of bread service. Yes. After the breaking of bread service in the bread and assembly, you have the Chinese mission. That's at what time now? 12.30. 12.30 Chinese, so breaking of bread in the morning, Chinese mission. And after that, we have lunch, prepare to go to country wherever we are, have asked to speak. Yes. So we usually use a, bit, a very full Sunday. Some of us. Some of the people had Sunday school to teach at their, their churches, like my wife Inez. Yes. She would have Maranatha at 3 o'clock and over by 4.30 and have to be off by 5 o'clock. Wow. Mm. And then go to the country. Yeah. So what time you come home? Oh, various well, home. Various time. <laughs> 10, 11, 12 o'clock. <laughs> and you go to work Monday morning? Oh, yes. Wow, wow. <laughs> yeah. Lord, I give them strength. strength. 1970 to 1980. Swallowfield Chapel was born out of this mission. It was inaugurated on Thursday, October 15, 1970 with 30 founding members led by elders Eli Ho, Cecil Ho, David Ho and Henry Wong and deacons Richard Masado, George Chinloy, Harry Long and Leslie Lim Sang. Number 5 Swallowfield Road became the home of the church. 
At the commencement, there was an evangelistic outreach into the community. Ministry in the early days included family Bible hour, Sunday school, junior church, youth fellowship, camps and vacation Bible school. Over the period, singing groups emerged such as Omegans, The Gospel Train and The Chosen. A wide cross-section of people from the community and the city and students from many high schools from Kingston and St. Andrew came to know the Lord and matured in their faith at Swallow. Camps involving the whole church also marked this period and were spiritual high points. Some will recall the great days at Dint Hill Technical High School and later at other locations. Missions has been at the core of Swallow's ethos. Since the 70s, the church has hosted an annual missions conference and financially supports missionaries and mission organizations. Swallow has supported short-term mission trips and mobilized members for long-term mission engagement. Missions outreach included ministry in Dominican Republic, Haiti, Hong Kong, Antigua, Cuba, Honduras, Tanzania, Panama, Bolivia, West Africa, China, and Mexico. In the 70s, a number of swallows migrated. However, the church progressed as the legacy continued. Oh, 
Greetings to all of you. It's so special to be observing our 54th anniversary. And for those of you who have been here from the beginning, you can feel a special pleasure. We have much to thank the Lord for, and now we're just going to offer him uh, a, a prayer. So let's just pray. Father in heaven, thank you for your love for us. Thank you for redeeming us and reconciling us to yourself through our Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Lord, that you have taught us to pray and encouraged to pray. So Lord, we bring all our fears to you. We, we just acknowledge you as our God, as our, as our Lord, and the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. And Lord, we thank you for having allowed us to serve you over these 50, 54 years. And we just rededicate ourselves and ask you to continue to guide us and bless us and threaten us and help us to minister to all who we, we can. So Lord, thank you. We just want to praise you again for having been with us through these years and Lord, taking us from under 40 people to, to close to a thousand and more at this time. We thank you for every area of our ministry. You have blessed us, Lord, in our Sunday school ministry, in our youth ministry, in our young adults ministry, and, and in our congregation. So we just want to worship you and thank you and just dedicate ourselves to you. Lord, we, we, we want to commit every, every ministry to you. Thank you, Lord, for our pastor, for our leaders, for all those who serve you in, in, in different areas. Lord, as we, as, as we think of the areas in which you have, you have used us in the past, we, know we just pray that you continue to expand us. Lord, we know that there are those of us who in the midst of rejoicing, they experience a sense of, of loss, and we ask you to comfort them. Those who are sick, uh, not able to come out, Lord, those who are grieving for the loss of loved ones, we pray, Lord, that you would comfort their hearts and help them to hope and, and trust in you. So, Lord, we just commit ourselves to you. Lord, we, we want to intercede, not only for ourselves and this co community, but for our country. So we ask you, Lord, to bless our government leaders, government and opposition. Lord, we pray that they would be able to live out their, 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 their knowledge that you are God, and Lord, help them to carry out their responsibilities, Lord, with honor, with service, with integrity. And Lord, we pray for a nation of peace, that we can serve you. Lord, we know that, that there are wars and rumors of wars all over the, over the earth, and we just pray, Lord, that you would intervene and raise up leaders, Lord, who can, who can help to solve these problems. We think of war in, in the Middle East, uh, uh, Israel, and the surrounding nations. We think of war in Ukraine, 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 and of Lord, various other wars that are in different parts of the world. So Lord, we intercede and we ask you, Lord, to raise up peacemakers who can bring peace to our life. So Lord, we commit every era of our service to you. Thank you, Lord, for every ministry. 
Thank you for everyone that we would all feel, Lord, that we are part of your body. And Lord, we know that you love us and you want us to serve you. So Lord, as the song said, to God be the glory. And we give you all the thanks and praise. And we just re recommit ourselves to you. We, we ask these verses in thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Here's a look at what God has done in and through us over the past year. Three, two, one, okay. Our children's ministry has seen Sunday school classes grow significantly, with an average of 145 students attending weekly. Over the period, five children were baptized. The first ever music camp was held in July and some 50 children were taught how to play recorders, guitar, drums and keyboard. Discovery World, which focuses on outreach to our children from our solar field and neighboring communities, now has an average of 40 children. We also staged our annual Star Child event. Boys Club has an attendance of 85 boys weekly, with three boys attending baptism classes and two boys having completed our Learn and Earn program. Meanwhile, our Girls Club ministers to an average of 22 girls. Solarfield Chapel's Youth Choir, formerly known as the Children's Choir, celebrates 20 years of ministry this year. Crossroad, our teen ministry hosted weekly meetings with 60 to 80 teens participating. We hosted in August our Crossroad Camp, which had 63 teens in attendance and provided times of fun, rich fellowship, and delving in God's Word. Teen Sunday School resumed in June after a four year hiatus with five classes and an average weekly attendance of 65 teens. Meetup, our young adult-led ministry, continues to grow in numbers with combined in-person and online attendance averaging 120 people each Monday. Meetup presented five powerful series which included When It Hurts, I've Got Good News, Bible Characters, and From the Cell. A life-transforming meetup camp was held in September under the theme Revealed, which saw 90 people in attendance. Our adult discipleship offerings have included 41 connect groups and 10 adult Christian education classes. We also hosted a Freedom in Christ conference in which 202 swallows participated. More, our couples ministry has grown and explored riveting subjects such as help, now we are really married, covenant, the power of two made one and also hosted a karaoke night and a games night. Moore also won the first Peter quiz competition. 
Arise, a women's ministry hosted Arise Fridays with an average attendance of 110 ladies and presented powerful series including Goodness of God and God in the Meantime. Arise Refresh Retreat was held in August at Boone Hall with 96 women in attendance. Mellow, or men's ministry, hosted Mellow Week and hosted monthly Friday night meetings with an average of 60 men. Featured topics including judgment, pass your test, decisions, decisions, decisions. Mellow also shared time off-site and had men from other local assemblies attend meetings. Monthly Bible studies are also held. Kingdom Builders, our senior saints ministry, continues to keep in touch with the many seniors who are unable to attend church. We hosted our Kingdom Builders clinic in May, and Kingdom Builders continues to be very active in the soup kitchen and contribute to outreach activities. Sports and Recreation Ministry utilizes netball, football, basketball, table tennis, and wellness programs as an inviting environment for discipleship. They successfully staged the first Peter Quiz Competition, and Swallow placed second overall in the SEA Sports Competition. Swallow won the most disciplined team for the third consecutive year in the Christian Brethren Football League, and our coach was honored with the Coach of the Year Award. We praise God that 24 new members joined our fellowship. We continue our ministry of food distribution, delivering 100 care packages each month. We staged a successful blood drive. Our community pastor and team continued weekly outreach in the Swallowfield and Nannyville communities. They engaged men in street corner meetings, hosted home Bible studies, and breaking of bread with the elderly. Weekly devotions were held with the officers of the Stadium Gardens Police Station and monthly visits to the Edna Manley School for the Visual and Performing Arts to share the gospel. We also distributed tracts to 75 students at UE Open Day. We continue our ministry and support of four rural churches, namely Central Gospel Chapel, Aleppo St. Mary, Shiloh Gospel Hall, Maypen Clarendon, Highgate Gospel Hall, St. Mary, Salisbury Plain, St. Andrew. 75 Swallows participated in the training program for Fun in the Sun, and 25 people attended our evangelism training, Fire Shut Up in My Bones. We joined with the Church of God of Prophecy and other churches in the community for three Worship in the Streets. We also hosted a prison ministry leadership training in July. The prison ministry team continues to serve faithfully at Rio Cobre, Metcalf Street, and Kingston Central Lockup. Weekly, through our soup kitchen, we distribute 220 containers of soup. By way of overseas missions, five of our swallows joined the OA mission to London, England in September and report that 136 people received Jesus. The newly established Creative Arts Ministry has been active, delivering stirring dramatic presentations at various services. Our dance ministry hosted Kids Praise Dance Group, Sunday School Dance Interactions, Dance Catalyst, Dance Connection, and Adult Dance Ministry. Our educational institutions, Youth Reaching Youth and Liberty Academy at the Priory had another good year. Youth Reaching Youth students continued to be discipled and performed well with commendable success in the CSEC and CAPE exams and impacted many with the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Liberty Academy at the Priory continues to offer holistic discipleship and produce the 2024 top boy in the primary exit profile exam, PEP. To God be the glory. In our teaching and preaching, we have covered themes including studies in the book of 1 Peter and the series God Speaks. We resumed two services in June and hosted male and female split services also in June. Our children's ministry, more, and kingdom builders each led services. And we hosted online and in-person believers meetings. We also spent time in corporate prayer and fasting, all-night prayer meeting, and thank God for those who faithfully join online morning prayer, which averages about 70 participants daily. We praise God as we saw 71 salvation decisions and significant numbers for recommitment. We celebrated the baptism of 22 people and dedicated 48 babies. Our brother Lenworth Kelly was installed as an elder. Over the course of the year, we also hosted a successful campus cleanup day. We say a big thank you to all who have served and continue to serve in and through Swallow, our beloved community. We give thanks to God for all he has done to the only wise God our Savior. Be glory and majesty and dominion and power.
both now and forever. Amen. say thanks for the things you have done for me things so undeserved yet you gave to prove your love for me the voices of a could not express my gratitude all that I am and ever hope to be I will all to thee sometimes I ask myself how can I say things, the many things you've done for me, thing after thing so undeserved, yet you gave to prove your love for me, and the voices of a million angels could not express
Our scripture reading today is taken from Luke 4, 14 to 21, and John 20, 19 to 22. Let's start with Luke 4, 14 to 21. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news about him spread throughout the whole countryside. He was teaching in their synagogues, and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began by saying this to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Now, John 20, 19 to 22. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for the fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. We thank Kalando for reading the scriptures for us. Happy 54th anniversary, Swallow. You know, I've been at Swallow from the very early days. What a blessing. Time certainly flies. I remember many years ago speaking with Uncle Eli Ho of Blessed Memory, one of the founding elders of Swallowfield Chapel. And he told me that he recalls seeing me walking down Swallowfield Road in my short pants on my way to church. I, I simply chuckled. This brought back fond memories of walking with my brothers from our home at 20 Swallowfield Road down to number five. My parents were among the first from the Swallow community to become members of the church. Many others from the community also became swallows. And you know, as I reminisce, I recall our vibrant Sunday school, youth fellowship, Easter camp, outreaches in, in swallow across the city, out of town, mission trips overseas, musical and drama productions, barbecues, family Bible hour on a Sunday morning, Sunday evening communion services, prayer meetings, care groups, plenty character building, life transforming ministries and activities. You know that old house, which is at number five, is a real treasure. It was home for a number of swallows, literally for a number of years. And for a number of us, it was like a second home. We had many after school link ups playing football. You know, I destroyed many shoes on that hard court over there. Volleyball, we played, you know, dominoes. We ate from Dolphus, that was our caretaker at the time, his pot. You know, we eat dumpling and ackee and saltfish and chicken back. It was wonderful days. I remember the days of miniskirts and dashikis and soles, you know, Afro, crimpoline, rejoicing. We rejoiced in the numerous baptism, the births and marriages. And we laid to rest beloved swallows who went home to glory. I was baptized at Swallow. That was in August of 1974. I met my wife at Swallow. We got married here, we had children. We, we have seen them married and now my grandchildren. And in fact, four generations of my family attend. From a fledgling small church of 30 in 1970, the church has grown significantly, acquiring property and expanding the reach of God's ministry to the nations, being and making disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ. We give God thanks for all who have contributed to the growth and ministry of Swallow over these 54 years. Can you say to, with me, to God be the glory, great things he hath done. Hallelujah. You know, God, incidentally, our anniversary falls at the time of Heritage Week, National Heroes Day. And so it is also fitting to thank God for our national heroes and all who have contributed to the growth and development of our beloved nation, Jamaica. I also want to offer special congratulations to those, including Swallows, who have and will receive national honors. You know, over the last two weeks, we have been reflecting on the church and its role in the world. 
we noted that the church is not a building, it's not really a place, but it's comprised of people who are committed to Jesus Christ as king and who represent Jesus and his kingdom in the world. We are called to the ministry of reconciliation. That is helping people to be reconciled to God, come back to God, and for people to be reconciled to each other. We are called to be a beloved community. On this, our anniversary, I would therefore like to share further on our role as church. And I want to submit that as a people of God, we are called to be and do good in the world. Hence, I have therefore titled our message, Good, to be or not to be. We will explore what the Bible says about being good and what that means for us today. Genesis 1, the very first book in the Bible, records, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and outlines God's creative work over several days. At the conclusion of various aspects of God's creation, the author Moses says, and God saw that it was good. At the conclusion of God's creation, it is recorded, God saw all that he had made and it was very good. I want to suggest that God is good and created a good world. If you agree with me, you can say, Amen. God is good and good all the time. The high point of God's creation was the creation of humankind, you and me, in God's image and likeness, the imago die. No other thing or creature bears this imprint of God and therefore shows God's prizing of human beings. The creation account also indicates a divine order of sexuality. God created us male and female. Both genders therefore share God's image and likeness and I submit that the genders together in complement give best expression to God's image. This complementarity is affirmed in Genesis 2 as the solitary existence of the male is described as not good and human creation is only complete when woman is made and brought to the man. And as a man, I rejoice that we have women. Hallelujah. God blessed them, that's male and female, and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves on the ground. We were created to share in God's community. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit invited us to be in his family, to love him, to love each other, to procreate, to multiply, and exercise delegated authority that is responsible care over God's creation. We are, you know, to be co-creators. This is God's creation directive to humanity as delegates of a good God to ensure the sustainable development of humanity and other creation all for the glory of God. Our obligation then to do good therefore has its genesis, its beginning in the very nature and being of a good God who invites us into partnership, into relationships and into community for the good of the world. When you read scripture, you'll see that there are three broad themes throughout the Bible that reveal God's perspective on people, on humanity, and should inform our being and doing good. The first broad theme is that God loves the world and sustains it. God loves the world and sustains it. The Apostle Paul writes in Colossians 1 verses 16 to 17, he says, for all things were created by him, that's Jesus Christ, and for him, and in him all things hold together. The reality of the continued sustenance of creation by our Lord Jesus Christ indicates, I believe, his abiding love, commitment, and investment in his creation. This abiding commitment of Jesus Christ in sustaining his creation should inform then the role of God's people in the world, the church. We are called to share in his loving, sustaining and redemptive mission for the world. The creation then, peoples, the systems and, the, and structures in our world, the environment are therefore clearly valuable to God. They are worthy of redemption and should likewise be to us. Ultimately, God's plan is the uniting of all things in heaven and earth under one head, even Jesus Christ. 
But there's a second theme we see in Scripture, the reality of the fall. Genesis 3 records our fall as a result of our sin, our breaking of God's law. And that caused a horrible shift in the use of power from the creation ideal. Power is no longer used relationally for our common good, but instead is used in very oppressive, dominating, exploitative, and simply selfish ways. Humanity is cursed and experiences, among other things, separation from God, death, physical death and eternal separation from God, brokenness in our very beings, in our lives, broken relationships, physical suffering, painful toil, and spoilage of the, of the planet. The book of Genesis reveals the deterioration of human society as successive generations became more evil than the previous. There is murder. When you read it, there is murder, there is corruption, there is poverty. And so societies embrace economics of greed and exploitation, politics of dominating power, suppression, and man-made religion which supports these values and controls people. It is very sad, God's co commentary, his observation of humankind. When you read Genesis 6 and verse 5, it says this, God lamented, God is sorrowful that he made man on the earth, and hear these words, and his heart was filled with pain. God's heart was filled with pain. But that's not the end of this story. There's a third theme in scripture, which is God's redemptive moves. That's a third theme which describes the initiative, the moves taken by God to restore, to bring us back his creation to himself. And God gave indication of his redemptive plan at the very fall, at the outset, when man fell. God said to the serpent, the Lord said to the serpent, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers, he will crush your head and you will strike his heel. Genesis 3, 14 to 15. The biblical record reveals the progressive unfolding of God's salvation plan. God's preservation of Noah and his family through the flood indicates God's desire to save humanity. The call by God of Abram indicates the further outworking of God's intent and the role a called out people was to play in executing God's salvation plan. As such, Abraham was told by God. God came to him and God said, leave your country, your people and your father's household and go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and all peoples on the earth will be blessed through you. Genesis 15, 1 to 2. I want to suggest that implicit in God's call and offer of blessing is a call to a restoration of God's creation ideal for Abram and his great nation and for that nation to be a model and means of that blessing, that good for the nations, the ethnos, the people groups of the world. This theme provides biblical foundation, helping to clarify and define, I believe, what is the role of the church. Abram, look at it, he was called in and out of his family context, his father's household. He was called to be source of blessing. And God calls people firstly to himself and then to be in the world as his kingdom community for the sake of the world, for the restoration of all human society to his kingdom ideals. The Bible records, however, the sad commentary of this chosen people, the Jews. They rejected their God and failed in their responsibility. Notwithstanding this, God pursued them relentlessly, his relentless love as he sent his prophets to warn them of their error. And, and, and the, the prophets called them back to God and to go, do good. The prophet Micah captures precisely God's call on his people. Micah said in Micah 6 and verse 8, he says, he has shown you, O mortal, what is good. What is good? And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. I want you to note and underline three broad themes there. The themes of justice, mercy, and humility under God. These are vital to doing what is good. 
I want to suggest that the word which best describes the kind of society God intends is captured in the Hebrew word shalom, a shalom community. A shalom community or society is marked by justice, mercy, and humility under God. There are some equivalent English words for shalom, um, words such as totality and wholeness and well-being, harmony. It is human flourishing. Shalom includes bodily health. It includes security and strength, a long life ending in a natural death. It means prosperity and abundance. It means successful completion of an enterprise. It means victory in war. Can I pause to ask, who among us longs for shalom? I do. Shalom describes a community, not, not simply the interior well-being of an individual or small group of people. Shalom is therefore, it's, it's a political word, an economic word, and religious word that is meant to be corporate and society-wide, as well as personal, individual, and family-wide. This is the kind of society God intended for his people, Israel, and indeed for the world. I want to submit that the ministry of God's people in the world for its good is for the establishment of shalom. But Israel dropped the ball. Israel failed to fulfill its God-given mandate to follow God and to be ambassadors of blessing, good, shalom to the nations of the world. Isaiah prophesied and pronounced God's wrath against their injustices and folly. But alongside this word of rebuke, the prophet brought a word of hope and deliverance. I want to pause here to observe that notwithstanding their failure, Israel's failure, God still loves Israel and has plans to bring many from Israel into his kingdom. We should therefore pray for Israel and for the peace of Jerusalem, which includes praying for the salvation of all ethnic groups in Israel, in Jerusalem, all ethnic groups in the Middle East. Let's be praying for peace and let's be praying for salvation. Isaiah prophesied the coming of Jesus, Jesus, our supreme model. He would be source of deliverance and healing for the nations. He was to be born, you know, we're told in, in an obscure region, a region called Galilee. He would break the yoke of their oppression and set them free. And just as God delivered his people in the past from the hands of the Midianites by a very small band of soldiers led by Gideon, God would, through this seemingly insignificant deliverer, supernaturally deliver his people. The Messiah, Jesus the Christ, would, among other things, be Prince of Peace, which means the author and giver of all good, Prince of Shalom. And as we observe the word for peace in the Hebrew, it is really a rich and comprehensive meaning. Jesus' is life and ministry is therefore supreme model and example of shalom in an individual and its strategic outworking for the transformation of society. If you want to see then how sh sh shalom ought to, to work itself out, how it looks in a person, look at Jesus and look at how he ministered. In this regard, Jesus' ministry was what we could describe as missional and incarnational. What do I mean by that? Missional means that Jesus went to people and proclaimed the gospel of the kingdom. He called people to repent and enter the kingdom of God. He went on mission. He reached out to people. His ministry was incarnational as he became or becomes fully human. He lives among the people. He lived among the poor, the humble. He served the marginalized. He served the vulnerable, those who are powerless. The reality of the incarnation, that is Jesus becoming a human being, is a powerful statement of God's love and solidarity with you and me, with human people, for our good. And, and, and it indicates the inestimable value God places on people of the world. John 3, 16, you know, very famous verses, For God so loved the world. Jesus' manifesto, which was read in our text, was very liberating. He says, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. You know, in Acts 10 and verse 38, we are told that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power 
and he went around doing good and healing all who were under the paw of the devil because God was with him. Jesus ministered the whole gospel to the whole man. He healed the sick, whether in body, soul, and spirit. He announced himself as means of coming back to God, means of reconciliation to God. He taught with authority a new counter-cultural ethic revealed in his Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5 to 7. His teaching focused on repentance, turning away from living for self and, and living in sin, and, and, and called, challenged us to inner change in the reordering and shaping of our behaviors and our relationships. Jesus rejected violence and called his followers to love their enemies while showing a way to resist evil by what can be called non-violent direct action. Jesus was a humble, active servant leader. He was gentle and compassionate. He was, however, courageous and showed what it meant to have power under control. The word for that is meekness. He redefined power and confronted the powerful of the day, the uppity religious elite. He exposed their hypocrisy and their part in causing oppression and suffering to the weak. He called them out. His was the sword of truth. He never ever lifted up a physical sword, but he lifted up that sword of truth, the word of God. He lived and spoke truth. He uncovered deceptions and lies which supported the world system and the powerful exploiters of the age. Jesus was strategic. He was incisive and penetrating in challenging those who oppressed others. As Prince of Peace, his offer of peace was costly and embra meant embracing the price of conflict and struggle. See, for example, in Luke 12, verse 49 to 53, he says, I've come to bring fire on the earth. What does that mean? Allegiance to Christ may cause even divisions in family, and it requires embracing the way of the cross. What does that mean? It means dying to selfish living, dying to living for myself and instead living for King Jesus. Jesus, in, his te in teaching his disciples about power, said, Do not lord it over others, but humbly serve. The Son of Man, Jesus said, came not to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. Mark 10, verse 45. If we are therefore to follow Jesus, we must then be willing to enter the vulnerable space of powerlessness, suffering, and rely totally on God and not our power as we work for shalom. The prophet Zechariah said, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. So what then is the role of the church? What is our task? As church, we need to obey the clear biblical mandate to care for creation and to empower the weak and vulnerable, which includes the poor, widows and orphans. This mandate is expressed repeatedly through, through the lips of the Old Testament prophets. It's affirmed in the New Testament. You know, in Matthew 25, we are told that when Christ returns, he will separate the sheep from the goats. The sheep will be invited to enter into the joys of the kingdom. And a reason is given. It says, for I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. A stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me, sick and you looked after me, in prison and you visited me. And, you know, the disciples asked, when, Lord, did, you know, did, did we do this? And Jesus says, whatever you did for the least of these, my brothers, you did for me. The fulfillment of the mandate to be good and to advance the king, God's kingdom, Shalom, was modeled and expressed in the holistic ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. It was demonstrated through the early church. And Jesus said to his disciples, as we read in another text today, as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Jesus sends us. Big question, are we going? Jesus' life, teaching, and ministry then provides powerful model to inform the role of the church to do good in the world and what that means. We must, like Jesus, proclaim the kingdom of God and invite people to submit to the rule of King Jesus, to his reign. The church is called to represent what it means to be under Jesus' reign as its sign 
and foretaste. People should be able to, as it were, taste and see that the Lord is good by, 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 by interacting with us. And we are meant to be the agent of God's kingdom in the world and its instrument. We do this in the way Jesus carried out God's mission in the world. The church's proclamation of the gospel will only have validity and relevance when it confronts head on the often terrifying circumstances of human life. When it expresses hope in the face of despair, when it honestly and realistically accepts its vocation to convert hostility into hospitality. We are called to be peacemakers. We are reconciled to God and we are called to be a reconciling community, making God's peace visible through the quality of our life and ministry as a model to the world and as an invitation to the world to come and share in this. We need to, therefore to put aside ungodly divisions and provide a foretaste of shalom to a broken watching world. They will know we are Christians, how? By our love. And our witness can only thrive and succeed where there is unity among the people of God. Like Jesus, then we must reject violence. We need to accept godly suffering. We need to walk with the poor, teach the poor, empower them, and strategically and courageously resist and undermine the systems of injustice and corruption. This is what discipleship includes. God has placed us in our various cultural contexts, the church scattered in the world, and he has positioned us as his people in business, in the economy, in media, in the schools, in education, in sports, in justice, in religion, in, in our family, in arts, in governance. Why? To be God's transforming presence, advancing his kingdom agenda of shalom. You are the light of the world, the salt of the earth. And we must strive always to ensure that our lives, our families, our communities and nations are aligned to God's new order in Christ. We are God's kingdom agents, his ambassadors in a broken world. We are agents of healing and reconciliation for people and all creation to be restored to God's creation ideal. In reaching out to the world for its good, we therefore affirm the positives in our cultures. Whilst we challenge those aspects in our cultures which harm and are demonic and dehumanizing, we also need to move from primarily a strategy of invitation where we're telling people to come to one where of infiltration, where we move out of the wall, so to speak, of the church and we reach out to people. We need to seek to understand the struggles and issues people are dealing with and share the hope and love we have in Christ. As church, we must be a beloved community and model Christ shalom. Our ministry must therefore be holistic. That is to the whole man. We need to address the issues with which people in our communities and societies struggles, struggle. These include in our context, helping to address issues such as education and health care and housing, employment and other areas of need. I want to suggest that we need to give particular attention to fostering healthy family life, which is being threatened by various worldviews and practices. In Jamaica, 86% of our children are born out of wedlock. Let that sink in. 46% of families are headed by women in Jamaica. The research I did back in 2009 indicate that in the Swallowfield community, 59% of households are headed by females. We therefore must strengthen and support biological families in the, fam in, the, in, in the church as well as in our community. And we must be a faith family, a family for those who do not have family. I want to suggest that we must also strengthen our efforts to reach and disciple the generations of millennials and, and successive generations of teens, those who are in this part of the world. Many are leaving the church. How do we do so? I remind us of some things I've shared in the past. We need to empower youth. You know, that means we need to be real with them. We need to be warm and personal. We need to train, equip, and release our youth to serve. Give them keys to the car, having taught them to drive. We need to empathize with them. Instead of judging or criticizing, we need to step into their shoes, recognize the unique challenges they, they face. For example, the issues such as gender fluidity. Is that really true? 
family breakdown, mother and father wounds that our young people are, are, are wrestling with and dealing with. You know, when you go and you're wounded in life, there's a way that if you don't address these appropriately, it come out sideways and it hurt other people. The stress, we need to try and understand the stress they are under, the mental health challenges, the anxiety and depression. As the people of God, we need to take Jesus' message seriously. Instead of parroting Bible formulas and claims, we need to welcome young people into a Jesus-centered way of living. We need to share our stories of failures and successes by God's grace. We need to help them to work to figure out God's unique call on their lives. I'm saying to us, let's embrace our young people's doubts about faith and walk with them. We need to be a beloved, warm community. We need intergenerational friendships. Everybody has a place at the table. You know, my, my grandchildren, my children, my generation, my parents, everybody has a seat at the table. It takes a village to raise a child. We need to build relationships. And part of the vision of our transformational oasis is to create safe space and place for us to hang out. Let's be real with each other and build solid, caring, respecting relations, respectful relationship. Let's practice hospitality. That's a big thing, hospitality. And we need to be inclusive. Let's look for creative ways to tangibly support and involve all generations in all we do at Swallow, across all ministries and across all of our teams. Let everybody be involved. And we also need to be good neighbors. Instead of condemning the world, we need to enable our young people to neighbor well, both locally as well as globally in this global village. Let's help them to find purpose. Graciously loving unbelievers. You know, people oftentimes need to feel they belong before they believe. Let's do good together, dealing with issues of justice, the care of the environment, beautification of our broken neighborhoods, helping the weak and indigent, community service. Let's provide compassionate care for those who have various challenges. And these include same-sex attraction, which I submit is one of the outcomes of the, the fall. As a people of God, we need to offer compassionate care for those who wrestle with all kinds of life issues. There is healing and there is hope in King Jesus. If you agree with me, you can say amen. And we also need to speak prophetically. From a position of holistic outreach, reaching out to the whole man, the whole gospel to the whole man, the church earns, I believe, credibility to speak prophetically. That's God's no word, his no word, what he's saying now to our families, our communities and nation. Prophetic speaking, I believe, should flow out of our prayer and fasting. We are called to be a house of prayer for the nations. As we see what is happening around us as a people of God, big thing we need to be doing is praying. I believe as church, we must advocate for good governance to ensure proper stewardship and accountability for our nation's resources. And we need to be vanguard in, in seeking to root out corruption. We need to be concerned about our environment, issues such as Climate change, we see the impact and the effect. Racism, issues of refugees in our world, the issues of unwanted children, unborn ch children and, and issues of abortion. We need to be concerned about that. We need to be concerned about freedom of religion, freedom of speech. We need to be concerned about the LGBTQI plus agenda. We need to be concerned about terrorism. We need to pray. We need to be God's kingdom voice and model in the world. We speak, we are called to speak for the weak and promote justice. Where there's discrimination, where there's destructive conflict, violence and oppression, the church needs to be Christ's voice calling for repentance. We need to be like Jesus and sacrificially serve. It may involve laying down our lives if necessary. We must promote, we must foster truth speaking, justice, forgiveness, restitution and reconciliation. This is sometimes dangerous ministry, but necessary work if there is to be healing and reconciliation. And God promises to be with us always as we go. I will be with you always to the very end of the age. You know, at Swallow, we have small groups and ministries serving the needs of children or youth, adults, families, leaders, or community and nation. These ministries are really means by which we make disciples and do good. 
And I want to encourage you to join us on the journey of discipleship and doing good. And may I offer a quick word to our leaders. We need as leaders to lead in prayer, in listening to God, listening to our world, what is happening in our world, and helping to equip and empower the people of God in relevant ways to reach and disciple others and to do good. And finally, I must let you know that Jesus will return. Is there a hallelujah in your house? He must come back. He will return. God's kingdom has come, but is not yet fully come. We live in the tension of the already and the not yet. And just before his death, Jesus told his disciples that he would yet share with them the happiness and fellowship of the kingdom. Jesus promised to return in glory and bring the blessedness of the kingdom to those for whom it was prepared. Our role as a people of God is to pray for the coming of God's kingdom and work as kingdom ambassadors for the good of the world. God has not given us the option of leaving the world to perish. We look forward to the return of our King when all will be made right and we will see the full manifestation of good as evil is finally banished. The story of God's goodness to humanity started in the Garden of Eden. It crescendos in a city before the throne of God. Our Lord Jesus has returned and the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. We live in the face of God to please him who loved us and gave himself for us. We live to execute his mandate to see the redemption of all creation. We look forward to hearing him say to us, well done, thou good and faithful servant. We live expectant to join the chorus of all the redeemed people of the nations of the world, all ethnicity who will gather before this throne and declare, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Let us therefore walk good and do good, advancing the welfare of the human race to the glory of God the Father. Maranatha. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Let us pray. Lord, we worship you as the good God, our good, good Father. Thank you for being good and doing only good for us, despite how many times we have hurt and, and diss you, Lord. Thank you for your amazing grace and love in Jesus, paying the price for our sins so that we could be reconciled to you and become your agents, your ambassadors of reconciliation. Lord, we pray today and ask that you would forgive us as your church for not faithfully following in your way of shalom, promoting and modeling justice, mercy, and humility. Forgive us for refusing to die to our selfish ways, preferring our own comfort to the sacrifice involved in fighting for the salvation and good of others. Forgive us, Lord. I ask you to cleanse us from all that stands in the way of us being your united, beloved community, gathered and scattered in the world. And Lord, on this, our 54th anniversary, please anoint us afresh to be your church, united in building your kingdom and seeing your kingdom come in our families, our workplaces, our communities in Jamaica and indeed to the nations of the world. We want to hear, Lord, we hear and respond to your call to specially embrace all generations in the work of your church, to walk and practically minister to the poor and outcasts of our society, to be actively involved, Lord, in countering all that corrupts and destroys the flourishing of our communities, our nation, as we be and make disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ. Help us, Lord, to each grasp a clear understanding of our individual role in your big picture and to faithfully obey your call on our lives. For us who have started strong, Lord, but have, as it were, fallen off the wagon, Lord, consumed by distractions or our own pain, I ask you, Lord, please refocus us, heal and restore us to your fulfilling holistic mission in the world. 
As your church, Lord, we declare that we will walk good and do good, not by might or by power, but by your spirit, O Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. There are some of us who are listening today to, to this message and you don't know Jesus yet. You have not come as yet into the kingdom. If that's you, the good news is today is a day of salvation. Today, you can come into that experience of shalom. It starts by acknowledging that you're a sinner in need of salvation and asking Jesus to forgive you of your sins and invite him to be the leader, the ruler of your life. Wherever you are, wherever you're listening, you can do just that. In your own words, just cry out to the Lord and ask for forgiveness of your sins and invite Jesus Christ to be the ruler of your life. And the word of God says, those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, shall be delivered. And if that's you, or you're a believer and there are issues with you and have been up on earth, even as we have spoken today together, we invite you to reach out to us on the numbers indicated on the screen at the close of the service. We'd be happy to pray with and for you. Join us in a song of worship, after which I'll offer our benediction.
Let's now share our benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you his shalom, his peace. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Happy anniversary. Walk and live good. Receive confidential prayer, email or text your request to prayer at solofieldchapel.org or by text at 876-877-9794. Visiting with us for the first time? Welcome! We invite you to complete the contact card in the link below to connect with us. God bless you. Thank you for giving cheerfully. Here are a few convenient ways to do so. One, you may deposit your tithes and offerings in the drop box at the church office at number 7, Mondays to Fridays from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Tithes and offerings can also be done by a direct online deposit to our Swallowfield Chapel BNS New Kingston current account, number 804161, branch number 50575, or click Give on our website, swallowfieldchapel.org. Donations for food care packages should be so indicated. Join us at 5 p.m. at number 9 as our youth choir celebrates 20 years of ministry with every praise, an evening of worship and thanksgiving to God. Invite family and friends and let's celebrate these milestones together. Also, you need a ticket to enter the concert. You can get your free tickets for the concert in the foyer after the service. We'll resume two in-person services on Sunday, October 27 at 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. The Jamaica Fire Brigade will be celebrating Fire and Life Safety Awareness Week with a national church service right here at number 9 during our second service at 10.30 a.m. This is a communion Sunday. However, communion will only be done in the first service at 8 a.m. After the second service, the Jamaica Fire Brigade will conduct a march pass on Swallowfield Road. There will be no ACE class today and classes will resume on Sunday, October 27. There will be no meetup this Monday as we celebrate National Heroes Day. Meetup resumes on Monday, October 28. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Tickets for the Emerge Dance Workshop will be available in the foyer after the service. For the links to these and other activities, visit swallowfieldchapel.churchcenter.com. May God bless you all as we worship together.